So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over potential energy diagrams. So let's start with this one. On the left, you have the reactants, and on the right, the products. At the top of this diagram, we have the transition state, also known as the activated complex. On the y-axis is the potential energy, and on the x-axis, this is the reaction coordinate. So notice that the products have less energy than the reactants. Whenever you see that, this reaction is considered to be an exothermic reaction. Exo means like outside. Exothermic means that heat is released out of the system into the surroundings. So whenever heat is released, the enthalpy of the reaction is negative. As you can see, the enthalpy is the difference between the potential energy of the products and the reactants. So it's products minus reactants. Because the products have less energy than the reactants, you're going to get a negative value. Now, what is the energy difference between the transition state and the reactants? What is that called? This is known as the forward activation energy. The activation energy is the energy that's needed to get the reaction started. Without that energy, the reaction will not work. So one way you can reach the activation energy is by increasing the temperature of the reaction, which will speed it up. Now, what is the energy difference between the transition state and the products? This is the activation energy, but for the reverse reaction. So if you need to go backwards, you got to go this way. Once you reach the transition state, that's when the, um, the reaction takes place. So you need enough energy to get to the transition state. Now, what's going to happen if we add a catalyst to this reaction? Now, we know that a catalyst, the purpose of a catalyst is to speed up a reaction. And enzymes are a biological catalyst that speeds up our reactions in living systems. Now, if we add a catalyst, we're going to have a new diagram that looks like this. As you can see, the activation energy is lower. Here, the activation energy is only this high, but before, it was significantly higher. So as you can see, adding the catalyst lowers the activation energy. And when you have a lower activation energy, the reaction will proceed faster. And so that's how a catalyst will speed up a reaction. It's by lowering the activation energy. Now, how can we draw the potential energy diagram for an endothermic reaction? If you wish to draw it for an endothermic reaction, you need to draw the products with a higher energy than the reactants. So the products have to be above the reactants. And now it's endothermic. So as you can see, delta H is going to be positive. Since delta H is products minus reactants, if you take a large number and subtract it by a small number, you're going to get a positive result. For example, 10 minus 4 is positive 6. On the left side, if you take a small number, subtracted by a large number, you're going to get a negative result, like 3 minus 7 is negative 4. So because the products have more energy than the reactants, what we have is an endothermic reaction. So in this reaction, the system absorbs heat energy, it gains energy, and so the enthalpy of the reaction is positive. Now, it turns out that the enthalpy is really the difference between the activation energy of the forward reaction and the reverse reaction. So let's put some numbers to this. So let's say this is at the products is at a value of 100, the reactants is at 300, and the transition state is at 600. So if we want to calculate, let's say, the forward activation energy, 
The forward activation energy is the difference between the energy of the transition state and the energy of the reactants. So in this case, that's going to be uh, 600 minus 300. So the activation energy for the forward reaction is positive 300. Now, if we wish to calculate the reverse activation energy, it's the difference between the energy of the transition state and the energy of the products. So that's going to be 600 minus 100, which is uh, positive 500. Now, if we wish to calculate the enthalpy of the reaction, it's the uh, products minus the reactants. So the products have a value of 100, and the reactants is 300. So because the products are in, they're lower in energy, it's going to be a negative 200. That's the enthalpy of the reaction. So notice that the enthalpy of the reaction is also the forward activation energy minus the reverse activation energy. The forward activation energy is positive 300. The reverse is negative 500. If we subtract these two, we're going to get the enthalpy of the reaction, which is negative 200, which is the same as this one. So you can remember these four equations. So that's the enthalpy. You can find it by subtracting the two activation energies, or you can take the energy of the products minus that of the reactants, and you can calculate the forward activation energy using those two. And here's the reverse. So four useful equations that you can get from the potential energy diagram. Now what about a two-step reaction? How can we draw the potential energy diagram for that? So let's try it. So if you have a two-step reaction, there's going to be two transition states, TS1, TS2. The transition state is also known as the activated complex. So here's the reactants, and here's the product, and this is the intermediate, which is like, it's in the middle. So overall, is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Notice that the products have less energy than the reactants. So therefore, the enthalpy of the reaction overall is negative. It's an exothermic reaction. Now, what about the enthalpy for the first step? Let's call it delta H1. Is it endo or exothermic? So for the first step, we're going from the reactants to the intermediate. Notice that the intermediate has more energy than the reactants, so we're going up. As you go up, that means the system has to gain energy, so therefore, um, delta H is positive. Now, as you go from the intermediates to the products, you have to go down in a potential energy diagram. So the enthalpy for the second reaction is negative. So for the first step, it's endothermic. The second step is exothermic. And overall, it's an exothermic reaction. Now, which step is the slow step or the rate determinant step? Is it the first step or is it the second step? What would you say? Now, notice that the first step has a higher activation energy than the second step. So because the first step has a higher activation energy, because the transition state is higher than the second transition state, this is going to be the slow step. Because it's going to be a lot harder to go up this mountain than it is to go up this mountain. So this is going to be the slow step. It's going to take a longer time to get through TS1. TS2 is easy to pass through because it's not so high in energy. So the transition state that has the highest energy, it's going to be associated with the slow step. And so that's what you want to know uh, for these types of diagrams. So here's uh, an example problem for you. Draw a potential energy diagram that has three steps where the second step is rate determinant and the overall reaction is endothermic. And let's say the first step is endothermic, the second step is exo, and the third step is endothermic. How can we draw such a potential energy diagram? 
Okay, so let's be careful with this. So overall, it's endothermic. And we said the first step is an endothermic step. So let's draw something like this. The second step is the rate determinant step. And also, it's going to be exothermic. So it has to be very high if it's going to be the rate determinant step. If it's exothermic, it has to be lower than the than what it was previously. Now the third step is endothermic and it's endothermic overall. So this has to be higher than the reactants. So this energy diagram meets the characteristics. This is uh, TS1, TS2 since that's the highest. The second step is the slow step. And here we have the reactants and the products. Because the products is higher than the reactants, overall it's an endothermic reaction. Now intermediate one is higher than the reactant, so the first step is endothermic. Intermediate two is lower than intermediate one, so the second step is exothermic. And the third step is endo because the product is higher than intermediate two. And so that's how you can draw a potential energy diagram with three steps and the characteristics that we mentioned before. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a better understanding of potential energy diagrams.